Are you guys sure you got this? Yeah. The twins are plugged in. Baby's asleep. How hard can this get? Poor men. Besides, I bumped into Chuck Norris at a Pizza Hut once. I think his powers rubbed off on me. Get out of here. Go on, enjoy your mommy getaway weekend. Oh, this weekend was a bad idea. You remember what happened last time we watched the kids? I'm not a pinata! <laughs> yeah, we're gonna need help. Warning, use of this product may alter your perception of reality. <sighs> All right, everything looks the same. This is a joke. Guys, guys. Guys, it's like the Sahara in this cup. Can somebody hit me with some juice? <laughs> and listen, pulp, no pulp, doesn't make a difference to me. You're the ones dealing with the diaper. Mom goggles. <laughs> it's beautiful. <laughs> Okay, sweetie, I need you to sit on your bottom. Listen to daddy. You sit on your bottom, okay? Daddy's gonna come get you. Dude, don't move. Don't dance. Just sit on your bottom. Daddy's gonna come get you. Whoa, 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 whoa! Don't you try to stop me. Baby made a poopy, yes you did, dude. Where are your mom goggles? They wouldn't fit over my hazmat suit. Take this. Oh, oh. You're so cute. <laughs> and then the little boy <laughs> rocked his mommy. Oh, I love you forever. I like you too. <laughs> I don't know how they do it. Oh, well you take it and you fold it from corner to corner. No, I'm, I'm asking the question, how do moms do all of this? How do they handle it all? Well, maybe they have goggles we don't know about. It's as if God gave moms a special way of looking at things, you know? Okay, who taught you servanthood? Who modeled grace? Who gave you a taste of what God's love could look like? My mom, Mr. T, and my mom. Anyway, I, I just think God gave moms a special way of looking at things. Hey, honey. Hey, how's it going at home? It's all good. Guess you could say I'm starting to catch a glimpse of what your world looks like. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Mama. Hold on, your daughter wants to say something to you. I did mama. She says she misses you. And she realizes how important you are in her life. 
she doesn't know how you do it. And she knows that she can't make it without you. She said all that, huh? I don't know if she said it. But it's what I wanted to say. And I should have said it a lot sooner. I thank God for you. The twins. Um, it, it was nothing. Um, we, we have to go, okay? Um, lo love you, Mommy. enjoyed um, that clip that was shown and I want to honour and say thank you um, to all the mums for all that you do for your children and um, I hope you've been spoilt today I hope you've had a really good um, time or that you're going to be spoilt later on today firstly I'd like to acknowledge that not everyone here is a mum or has been a mum secondly for some of you being a mum has led you on a very tough journey and thirdly, some of you haven't had a very good role model of a mum. Also, some of us will be grieving the loss of our mum, whether recent or years ago. So for many of us, Mother's Day is a very tough and emotional time and something that we would probably prefer to avoid. But as we walk through these emotions, I'd like us to take time and focus on God and what his example is to us. I decided first to look up the definition of being a mum. The meaning of being a mother is, a mother is a selfless, loving human who must sacrifice many of their wants and needs for the wants and needs of their children. A mother works hard to make sure their child children are equipped with the knowledge, skills and abilities to make it as a competent social human being. The world culture we live in will tell us that we are not good parents. Through my experience of having my own children and then my 14 years of working in the local junior school with children, that there is no perfect child. The biggest thing that I did learn though were things about me, the good and the bad. At a very early stage in my parenting, I went to a seminar on parenting. I don't really remember much about what was um, taught or the, the main subject matter, but I came away completely changed by this one statement. God doesn't give you the children that you want, but the children that you need. Children that will challenge you and develop your character. I'll say that again. God doesn't give you the children that you want, but the children that you need. Children that will challenge you and develop your character. Oh boy, was that a, a correct statement. Therefore, there is no perfect parents and no perfect children. We are all good enough parents for the children that God has blessed us with, and we have a God to trust them to. There is only one perfect person who has modelled the unconditional love, teaching and discipline to us, and that is Jesus. Our first scripture that I'd like to, to look up and to sort of develop in this is looking at the young women and the old women. Titus 2, verse 3 to 5. So that's Titus 2 verse three to five. In the same way, teach older women to be holy in their behavior, not speaking against others or enslaved to too much wine, but teaching what is good. Then they can teach the younger women to love their husbands, to love their children, to be wise and pure, to be good workers at home, to be kind and to yield to their husbands. Then no one will be able to criticize the teaching God gives us. Although specifically this was said to women, this can also be applicable to everyone, whatever age or gender we are. We can all have this sacrificial love and support for others. God gives us a great example of this. He is a great encourager. He is the one that loves us unconditionally. We need role models in our lives and we can all be role models to others. In Romans 15 verse 5, Paul says, May the God who gives endurance and encouragement give you the same attitude of mind towards each other that Christ had. Boy, do we need endurance as a mum. I've had the privilege of going into Little Seeds a number of times. If you know me well, I love being with mums and babies. 
it has been exciting to witness and hear the stories of some of our mums sharing their own struggles and stories. This honesty is so helpful and enables them to stand alongside the other mums as an example of reality to them as they struggle with the day-to-day -day routines and the bigger issues that present themselves in parenting. As a, continue, as a continuation of this, I was having coffee in one of the local coffee shops and a mum I rec recognised me from Little Seeds and opened up to me about the struggles she was having and how what a great place Little Seeds was to go to just feel the security of being there. Everybody has people who we look up to and go to when we're struggling or to share successes with or have fun and this includes the men. There are people in our lives who have made a great impact in the way we live and have protected us from making mistakes along the way. There is also another side to this. We too can also be role models. There are people who come, we come across that we can encourage and come alongside of and actually ask and actually ask us for this. Other people actually watch us and often by our actions and our examples, they follow suit. The challenge is what example are we setting? Paul wrote this in Philippians 4 verse 9. When, Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. God's example is the last next bit. And I'm reading verses from Deuteronomy 32. 11 to 12. In a desert land he found him. In a barren and howling waste he shielded him and cared for him. He guarded him as the apple of his eye. Like an eagle that stirs up its nest and hovers over its young, that spreads its wings to catch them and carries them on its pinions, he protects us and carries us. Some of you may have heard this story before and Heather Miller has also shared this story to some of the mums here, so I feel I have permission to tell it. On our very first trip to Stony Bible Week, Tom was six and Tim was four. Putting the tent up with two young, lively boys was quite challenging, so Heather offered to take the boys with her own three children for a walk around the site. The site is huge, as it's held in the National Agricultural Showground and every tent looked identical. Having the peace and the space, Dave and I put the tent up relatively quickly and with very few disagreements. And we're having our first cup of tea thinking this is going to be easy when Heather returned with her three children, exclaiming that she had lost the boys. She explained that she was only 15 metres behind our tent. She'd shown the boys which one was our tent. She'd pointed it, pointed it out and, and um, checked that they saw it and knew it was. And they promptly ran off in the wrong direction. Heather was mortified. I had that awful heart in the stomach feeling and Dave and Guy just legged it in the direction the boys had gone. Although they were only missing a few minutes, they were found quite a distance away. The relief when Heather and I saw them, we were just so overwhelmed. Now this is not necessarily a good example of mothering, but it showed me that even when things are out of your control, you have to face and learn from them. The boys learned quickly how vulnerable they were and that maybe listening and following instructions is a good idea. I learnt that I couldn't control every situation regarding my children, but I know a God who can and who does a better job than even me, even if I don't like the outcome and I actually can't see the positive at the time. The same promises that God gives us in these verses I have just read are also for our children as well. Excuse me while I pick the paper up, it's just fallen on the floor. Psalm 17, verse 8, says this. Keep me as the apple of your eye. Hide me in the shadow of your wings. Verses like this are an example of a bird covering us with our wings, protecting us, sheltering us. Even Jesus says the same in Luke 13, 34. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, you who killed the prophets and stoned those sent to you, how often I have longed to gather your children together as a hen gathers her chick under her wings and you are not willing. And then in Psalm 91 verse 4, he will cover you with his feathers and under his wings you will find refuge. 
His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Although God is our Father God, he also has all the attributes of what a mother is like, and we are his children. We would be prepared to sacrifice anything for our children, but God did sacrifice everything for us by giving his only son, Jesus, to die on a cross so that we might have this relationship with him. He accepts us as we are. He loves us unconditionally and for all eternity. He gives us a hope and a future. If you don't know if you have this relationship with God or not, can I or not, can I encourage you to contact someone from the leadership team to talk to them about it? You will never stop being a mother, whatever age your children are. Neither does God. So in response to this uh, message, if it has spoken to you, you might like to respond in your own home as you're as you're there in the quietness or not, as, as the case may be, if you've got children. But think about these three points, being thankful and grateful for your mum or the role model that you have had through the years as you've been growing up and reached adulthood. For your children, for shaping the way that you are. And to God, he understands he is your perfect father and mother. He is your perfect parent. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>